Uh, welcome to the Autopilot Center. Uh, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce um, tonight's very um, unusual and extraordinary night uh, and what is going to be awaiting us. Um, what is going to be awaiting us, none of us really know. And I think that's why I hope most of us are gathered here. If you are uh, waiting for um, a movie, that will have a produced soundtrack, then uh, my condolences and apologies, you have come to the wrong show. What awaits us today is something very different and something that will be born in the moment. And um, the, the idea of creating music in real time uh, is something that William Goldstein, um, who um, has come here to Estonia to to um, uh, receive um, this possibility, um, has only discovered um, some 10, 15 years ago. Um, he is actually much better, well, much, much better known for the countless movies, 50 some and more, that he has been the composer for, and has also been a um, pioneer in electronic instruments and, and, and synthesized scores back in the days. And at the same time, having been uh, in the Motown and CBS Masterworks record uh, labels, he has lived a whole other parallel life uh, from the uh, traditional conventional film music uh, perspective or classical music perspective. So uh, this gives him a very broad and, and strong foothold in uh, quite a lot of genres. So uh, it would be... Um, um, it would, it's my pleasure to bring to, to the stage William Gold, Goldstein. I don't know, if, are you here in the hall or is William going to come from next door? There we go. William Goldstein. So this is William in the flesh, uh, fresh from Los Angeles. Thank you, and I hope that jet lagged. Jet lagged. Um, uh, William told me that um, um, sitting him in front of the piano makes um, makes his jet lag go away. It does actually. So some magical music heals. So we don't want to keep you for too long, but if there are a couple of words that you might want to say, I would love in context. to. Yes, I, I I would like to set the stage, as it were, for what's about to happen because. I'm quite sure it's a new experience for everybody in the room. And it'll be a new experience for me because I've never done this before here with this particular film. But um, I would like to say that I discovered in 2011 that my ability to speak the language of music was not common amongst my colleagues. I thought everybody who was a composer could speak in real time. Um, and what is going to happen this evening is not really improvisation. Improvisation is kind of like making it up and this, that, and the other. Um, and I ask you all to think about when you speak to other people and you're having conversations that you're not really improvising, are you? You don't think of yourself ever as improvising when you're speaking, you're just speaking, unless you're in a situation where you actually have to improvise, like in a court in front of a judge or something. <laughs> but outside of that, you're... Is you're... something you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> I confess. Um, so uh, I am going to respond to the film in real time. As you will be taking it in, I will be translating my feelings into the language of music, basically. And I've done this with shorter films. This is the first time I've uh, accepted a challenge to do something of, of this um, nature and stature, and I'm very much looking forward to doing it, so I think that's the end of my conversation, and we'll get right to it. Very good, thank you. I've got one last thing that I didn't mention before, um, a rather important nuance. Um, William has not seen the film yet. Oh, yes. So this is the first time he will see. Yesterday was a yes. dress rehearsal. We allowed him to see a random one-minute section so that he would understand how the film looks, but he has not seen the film. Yeah, I was offered a chance to see the film 
But the first time I did this in the mid 80s to a short film of 20 minutes, they asked me if I would do it and, I, and they said they would send me the film. I said, I'll tell you, I'll do it, but don't send me the film. Let's let the audience know that I'm seeing it for the first time as they are and I will respond spontaneously. And it's much more exciting for everybody. So yes, I'm seeing this film for the first time. Thank you. Ja mind on huvitanud nende vaatluste juures kõigepealt seos, et tervik. Ja mind on väga paelunud selle asja ilu. Ja kui ma seda ilu kuidagi moodi saan jagada inimestega või elamusi sellest ilust, see sobib mulle kõige parem. Mis asi on valgus, milles me elame? Nii igapäevane asi. Aga kui sa sellesse süvened ja kui ta muutub üheks sinu tegevusala oluliseks komponendiks või osaks, võt siis hakkavad juba avanema uued tasandid selles.
Tunnusmene on oluline. Me ümber on kõik olemas. On asja, mis on inimesele antud. Ja nii on talle antud ka suund, millest ta peab liikuma. See on tema suund. Suund ongi oluline. Eesmärgid, noh, see võib natuke naljakalt kõlada, aga ma kuulun mingis võttes nende inimest hulka, kellel ei ole elus eesmärke ja kellel ei ole elus ka põhimõtteid. Sa ei ole mitte põhimõtte lage ja sul üldse ei ole eesmärke. Ma pean usaldama oma suunda. Kui sa seda usaldad ja kui sa sellest ka siis kinni hoiad sellest või sa järgid seda sisemist heli, seda trooni, mis sinus heliseb ja mida sa pead kuulma, nii siis sa jõuad varem või hiljem oma eesmärgile ja ma olen kogenud seda, et mida ligemale sa oma olematule või teadmatule eesmärgile jõuad, seda selgemi nii ta hakkab ennast ilmutama. Ja kui sa oled ükskord kohal, siis sa tõded üllatusega, et aha, siia ma olingi teel. Ma olen jõudnud oma eesmärgini. ja edukusest ja sinu äri heaks ja kõik sinu heaks ikka. Et sulle jääks üldse või tegelikult tulebki nii välja, et sulle jää enda jaoks üldse aega. Sul peab olema enda jaoks aega. Küll on õpetatud meid töötama, aga oluline oleks õpetada inimesi laisklema. See tähendab puhkama. Vahel peab olema laisk ja patune olla siis endaga.
See oli aprillis 83, kui ma lindistasin üht öölindu. Linnu laulu ja vaikust laulude vahelistes pausides. See oleks nagu kirikus, sest mets ja kus see lind laulab oma üist laulu, on kõrge männi mets. See on nagu sambad, mille kohal kõrguvad võlvid. Need on puude ladvad, mis oma vahel kokku lähevad. Ma tegin sellest lindistusest koopia ja me saatsime tema tolle aegseid võimalusi kasutades Inglismaale. Sest mul oli sellel inglastega BBC loodus saadete toimetuse inimestega head kontaktid ja oma üllatuseks ma sain tänu kirja, kus mul palubti saata võimaluse korral okasmetsa vaikust. See oli ma esimene kokkupuude vaikuse kui kaubaak. Põlvest. Ma olin sageli raskesti haige. Ma kogesin lapsena paaril korral üht nägemust. Ja kunagi väga palju aastaid hiljem, noh, ma sattusin kokku ühe väga elutarga vana naisega. Ja meil oli palju kõnelusi, niisuguste asjade üle, millega mul kellegi teisega ei ole olnud võimalik niimoodi kõnelda. Ja Ma kirjeldasin oma nägemust, mida ma olen vaevalt suuteline edasi andma pildiliselt, visuaalselt. Ja, ja ta vaatas mul otsa, ma küsisin, kas sa tead, mis see siis oli, mida ma nägin või mida ma kogesin. Ta ütles, et mina tean, mis see on. See oli sur, mis sulle lähenes, aga mis siin ära ei viin. Ja ma mäletan seda, et lapsena ma tundsin selle nägemuse puhul veel kohutavad hirmu. Aga ma muidugi teadnud, et seal võiks olla vähimatki ühist surma hirmuga. Ja ma ei ole väga tõsiselt võtnud võtiskelusid selle seal poolsuse ja elulõppu ja, ja kõige niisuguse. Sest ma ju ei tea oma sünnist midagi, ma ei tea ju mitte midagi sellest, mis oli enne, kui mina see ilma ilmusin ja, ja täpselt samuti on see ära meneksi. Ma ei tea ju sellest mitte midagi ja nii mul ei ole mingit pide punktigi üldse. Ja sellepärast ei ole ma peakest vaevanud ka sellega, et kuhu ma siis lähen nüüd see edasi saa.
Thank you. What do you think? You gave uh, this like a uh, second uh, birth of this film. Okay. <laughs>